Again, we're going to have a webinar here today on the multiplication math card games. I am Kathleen Cotter Lawler. I am your host today. Couple quick uh, housekeeping details. The sound is muted. So if you have any questions, please write them in the chat box right down here. I will answer all questions as we go along. Um, sometimes I may not answer something immediately because either I want to finish what I'm talking about or it's something that's going to be answered as we go along. Okay, all the games, actually we're going to be looking at two multiplication games here today. Um, they're both going to be pulled from the Math Card Games book written by Dr. Cotter. The first game we're going to look at is Multiplication Solitaire. This is game P19 in the Math Card Games book. Now, one quick note, each chapter in the Math Card Games book starts out the, the game in the beginning of the chapter, in this case, multiplication. The first game is gonna be the easiest game, and the last game in the chapter is going to be the hardest game. So P19 is kind of right about in the middle here. All right, our objective for this first game that we're gonna look at is to provide practice in recognizing multiples. So it's a solitaire game, so of course there's only one player, and we're gonna use any four sets of multiplication cards. Now today here, we're actually gonna be using the twos, threes, actually I take it back, it's gonna be the three, four, fives, and sixes for this first game. We're going to take the four sets, so, you know, the, the twos, two, four, six, eight, ten, all the way up. You know, so I have ten of each of them, so I've got a total of 40 cards. I'm going to lay four sets of cards face up in fans of three. And the last fan will have only one card because this doesn't work out in groups of threes. And our goal is to collect the four sets in order. Our rules... Um, excuse me. Our rules, only the top card... Of any fan may be played. Again, this is like a, a traditional solitaire game where you put the aces up on the top and you work your way through. Columns are started with the lowest number of a set as they become available. And you'll see what how this plays as we go through. The top card of a fan may be moved to another fan if the top number of the new fan follows one of the cards being moved. Again, this will make a little bit more sense once we show you how a game works. A group of cards may also be moved, the same thing as rule number three, provided they're all consecutive multiples of a set being used. The last card of any column may be moved to another column. And one reshuffle is allowed. When no more cards can be played, the remaining cards may be picked up, shuffled, and laid out again in fans of three each. All right, let's go ahead and play a game here. So we, again, we're gonna be playing with the threes, fours, fives, and sixes. So I've gathered all of my 40 cards, laid them out in fans of three. Okay, and since I've got three, four, five, six, let's look and see where our starting cards are. Oh shoot, I've got them all buried. Well, let's maybe start, oh actually I got an extra six there too. Okay, so let's actually start by seeing if we can move this 25 onto something. Can you see where that 25 could maybe be moved to? We could move it to the 30 right here because that would follow the same set. That's a multiple of five. So I can move that 25 over to the 30, which now frees up my five and my six. Okay, let's see if we can start to build on here. I'm going to start with the five. What's next in the five series? So if I'm counting by fives, I need a 10. Oh, look, and I've got one available down there in the bottom corner. So I can put that 10 on. So keep building. That 10 is going to need what? A 15, which I have right here. Add that on. 15 needs 20. Oh, shoot, I've got all my 20s are buried. Well, let's maybe go look at my six instead then. Six needs what next? It needs a 12. 12 after 12 needs a 18. After 18 comes 24. See that down there in the bottom corner, 24. After 24 is 30. See it up there in the top row, middle, middle one, there's 30. Next is 
36 and there's 36 there. So let's actually look at this here. Let's see if we can start to, to resurrect some things here. Here's a, here's a four. So if I wanted to try to move that four, I need to get that 12 moved off. So where could the 12 go? Could go to the 16, because that would be a multiple of three, four, five, or six. Or I could put it on the 18. I'm going to put it on the 18, because if I go back and put it on the 16, then I'm burying my three even farther. So I'm going to put it on the 18. You can see how some strategy is getting involved here. So I can have that four. So let's build on the fours here for a minute. So four needs a eight, top row. Then I need a 12. I can use that same 12 that I had. Then I need 16. And oh, look, now my three is available. So I can put my three down. And we can keep building on here until we get them all lined up. So this is a game that the children can play on their own. If they make an error, they won't win. So it helps you look and be comfortable with the multiples. That was multiples solitaire. The next game that we're going to look at here today is crazy squares. This is game P23 in the math card games book. And our objective is to quickly recognize multiples. Similar to what we were doing before, this is going to be a different game playing pretty much the same skills. Two to four people can play. And we're going to use five sets of multiplication cards. Now make sure that all players know which sets are being used. Here we're going to use two, three, four, five, and six. Now, we can deal seven cards to two players or five cards if you have more than, than two, that if more than two play the game. In the interest of making things a little bit simpler, we're only going to show five cards as we play. But seven, if we're only is actually two of us playing, then you would want seven cards. And their goal is to be the first one out of cards or with the fewest cards at the end of the game. It's played like crazy eights. So again, since we're using the multiples of two, three, four, five, and six, our wild cards, rather than the eights, are going to be the squares of the sets used. So two squared is four, three squared is nine, then 16, 25, and 36. So these are our wild cards. And because some of these numbers are used in more than one set, there's actually eight wild cards. Okay, so here's my hand, and here's your hand. Now, as we're playing this, if we were playing this for real, we would not see each other's cards. But since we're learning here, I want to show you both people's cards, mine and yours. So we're going to take the rest of our cards, turn one, lay them down, face down. We're going to turn one card over. And actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to start. So I'm going to call twos. So 10 is a multiple of two. And what do I have in my hand that's a multiple of two? I've got an eight. So I take an extra card. So I always keep five or seven in my hand, depending on how many people are playing. Now it's your turn. Now you could lay that four, but that four is also a wild card. So why don't you hang on to that one? Do you have something else though? It would be a multiple of twos. You have an 18. And my turn. I'm going to lay down a 12. Now it's your turn. What do you have? Well, you actually have a 12 and a 4, but look at what else you have. You have a lot of multiples of 3. So if you lay down the 4 card, it's a wild card, and you can call switching to 3s. So now everything has to be a multiple of three. So my turn. Can you see what I can do as a multiple of three? Well, I can do 24. Get my extra card. Your turn. Oh, you've got a whole bunch of stuff that you can use for multiples of three. You can just start laying them down. And my turn. 
oh dear, I don't have any multiples of three, so I need to take a card from the stock. Is that a multiple of three? No, I have to keep going until I end up with a multiple of three. Oh goodness, my next card got one, so I've got 15. I can play that card. Now it's your turn, and the game continues. All of these games are taken from the Math Card Games book written by Dr. Cotter. This book has addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fractions, clocks, and money, and number sense. All of that is included in the games. The Math Card Games kit includes the card, the card book, an abacus, the cards down here, fraction charts, and a DVD that will show you how to play 14 of the games. The Math Card Games Kit was also awarded the 2014 First Place Award from the uh, Excellence in Education Award from the Old Schoolhouse. The games are also part of the Right Start Math Curriculum, and the Right Start Math Curriculum had received the First Place Award in 2014 from Mary Pride's Practical Homeschooling Reader Award and the 2015 Practical Homeschooling Reader Award. In conclusion, games provide instant feedback. They provide an interesting repetition that's needed for those automatic responses, and more importantly, the games provide an application for the new information that the children have learned. Any questions? Well, if we have no questions, I will thank you for attending our Multiplication Math Card Games webinar. I will stay on here for a couple minutes if you have some questions. Um, otherwise, I thank you and have a fantastic day. Go play a math card game. Thank you.